I've been asked to make a video about how I might create flesh tones for darker skins. There are some mixes already in the two flesh tones videos I've made, but I thought let's just focus on it for a whole video here. So on the one side I'm looking at um, ochres and earth pigments you might use as a base and looking at the differences between them. Um, a basic mix for a brown that you can push in any direction because essentially all flesh tones are browns. It's just a question whether they're red browns, yellow browns, uh, peachy browns, you know, it's all basically tertiary colours. So on this side, with that in mind, I'm looking at opposite pairs of complements. So we've got an earth yellow and a purple. I'm going to try a red and a green. And this is quinacridone gold, which is kind of yellowish with a very strong purple. If I just want a good brown to start off with, my go-to is not burnt umber, um, because burnt umber tends to go grey when you lighten it with white. I really like this brown. This is transparent oxide brown. And the thing I really like about it is if I mix white into it to lighten it, to get lit planes, I mean, obviously you can lighten it with yellow, you don't have to use a white. But the thing that's really nice about it is that it doesn't gray. It keeps a lovely rich warmth to it, um, which is really important when we're trying to paint somebody in a warm light um, to keep the warmth in those flesh tones. Also, you know, helps people to look healthy and lively. So I really like this warmth that you get from transparent oxide brown, as opposed to um, some of the other umbers which will grey rather a lot more when you lighten them up. Sometimes obviously you want to grey it if it's in, you know, if it's a warm flesh tone in a cool light, it, uh, it will grey off a lot more in the lip planes, but you don't always want that. And it's nice to have the option to keep it warm without having to wrestle with it. This is Italian brown ochre. And you can see that for some richer, redder flesh tones, it would be a really good place to begin as a base. Um, so it's, it's pretty much there already, isn't it? In some instances, that would just be a really good place to start. Um, yellow ochre, as you would expect, is a lot more yellowish and probably is going to require some more work to make it look much more like a believable, workable flesh tone. Um, so with a yellow ochre, you're probably going to be looking to add a purple of some kind to neutralize it a bit. So this is ultramarine violet, it's a very blue purple I'm going to put into it. And possibly some red as well to bring it back to something a bit warmer. So let's try it with a bit of Indian red in it. Um, and then we're going to be pushing it more towards the Italian brown ochre color. Um, so if you wanted a more yellow tone, it's a good place to start, but I think you're going to have to work with it a little bit, probably flatten it with some white or a lighter value colour as well. Uh, but again, it's not hard to get it to something pretty useful. Um, but it definitely has a much stronger yellow note to it. If you wanted somewhere between the two, I think the yellow ochre deep is pretty good. It's a lot richer and warmer than the straight yellow ochre. Um, and it is quite fiery. So again, probably going to have to work to make it a bit more natural. So um, dioxazine is going to really knock it around actually. <laughs> it's going to make it a pretty strong brown out of it pretty quickly. Uh, but you can quite quickly begin to calm it down into something a lot less fiery and probably a lot more useful. So something I'm always wary of with darker skin tones is not to have them go grey when you're moving them up to a mid value. It's almost easier to keep the intensity in the shadow planes, um, which is the opposite from when you're painting a, a fair skin tone. Um, they want to go grey in the shadows. Darker skin tones always seem to want to go grey in the light. I've noticed really dark skin tones often take on a lovely blue note, um, especially outdoors in skylight. And I find with the King's Blue Deep, I can get to a really nice kind of blue note um, for a highlight outdoors, particularly with that transoxide brown. That's a, that's a really simple way to get to that kind of blue highlight note that you sometimes find on very dark skin. So just messing around now, my basic go-to mix for any dark, for any painting, any subject at all, um, these three colours are always on my palette lately. Um, transparent Oxide Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, and Indian, um, sorry, Alizarin Claret. The other colour I was thinking of is Indian Yellow, which I use a lot too, but the Transparent Oxide Yellow is a really good neutral yellow. It's a bit less feisty than the Indian Yellow. So I would generally begin by mixing them together to get a warm brown. Um, and the alizarin claret is, is great for giving real, a really deep brown black with a rich velvety color to it. Um, so it keeps that lovely warmth and intensity and richness 
um, for the really dark areas of shadows or um, in the hair, things like that, where you get these really intense blacks. But it keeps a warmth and, again, a, a sense of life in the colour. Uh, so I find that really useful. If you did want to cool it off, obviously just add more blue, but I don't find that so sympathetic when painting figure to have cold darks. On the other side here, let's just try some of these mixes. I've not made these mixes before, I'm just playing to see what happens really. Um, so I've got raw sienna, which you can hear is kind of stiff, slightly more granular texture to it, a, more so than the ochres. Um, and some ultramarine violet in there is going to move us to a cool um, yellow note in there. But again, I think pretty usable. So that was a nice simple mix, just a purple and a yellow effectively, but that's gone to a really useful neutral brown. If we go with oxide of chromium and try it, I thought let's just try green and a red. And these are of a similar value and they feel like a similar intensity and they're both opaque. There's a flatness to them. Um, and I thought actually, if you put them together, you might just get to a really useful um, kind of rich brown. I think you're going to need a bit more red, otherwise somebody's going to look very unwell. Uh, no, I'm not sure that is working quite so well. No, not quite so convincing, is it? It's either too red or too green, but finding the middle ground is proving to be quite tricky. It's coming. No, I'm not sure that would be a go-to for me though. It's a bit flat now, isn't it? Now I've mixed them together. I think I would want something a little bit richer. I'd probably be looking to put some crimson or claret in there or some of my dark mix just to give it some warmth back and some richness to it. So yeah, two completely opaque pigments there made for a very flat mix, whereas the, the slightly more transparent Sienna and generally the more transparent colours seem to be making for richer mixes. So this is quinacridone gold, which is frightening. <laughs> it's so powerful. And I just thought, let's try some really high saturation colours in case you're someone who likes to just always buy the really powerful pigments and then mix them down into more natural colours. So this is with dioxazine, um, deep purple. And the, the deep purple has a real blueness to it. So it's, it's trying to veer off towards something greenish, but the heat in the quinacridone gold is kind of keeping us on track, actually. That's making quite a lovely rich brown. I kind of hoped it might. Uh, so that's a good transparent, and it's got yellowness to it, which I think is quite useful a lot of the time with skin. Generally, I would say skin would veer towards a yellow brown rather than a red brown a lot of the time. So let's try some white in there. What would it do if we had to find a lighter plane? That's not bad, is it? That's quite useful. It is greying a bit, so I might be tempted to put red in there to try and keep the saturation up. Maybe some yellow. Yeah, but it's good for the darks. It worked well as a darker value, but bringing it up, it did flatten out a little bit, didn't it? Maybe if I'd lightened it with ochre, that might have worked better. Um, I'll try that here if I've got space. So let's try those two again, and instead of lightening with a white, could try lightening it with ochre this time. That purple is so strong. <laughs> it just eats things. Okay, so that looks like the same kind of rich, nutty, dark brown that we had before. If I spread it out, you can see it's a lovely rich brown. So let's try lightening it this time with ochre, which is a bit more gentle, well, a lot more gentle and warmer, obviously, than lightening it with white. See what happens. That's a lot more sympathetic. Yeah, that's working much, much better. So I've tried not to use the kind of obvious predictable pigments, so you can use other things in your kit maybe and experiment a bit more. So I hope that's been useful. Um, any more ideas, do just drop me a message in the comments there and I'll, I'll happily keep mixing forever. <laughs>